honestly rolling with me you will learn stuff because of my technique i have to use technique so yeah i really really love jujitsu hello fellow grapplers in this week's episode of the grappling podcast levi and i interview eileen spence Eileen is a blue belt here at Theory Jiu-Jitsu Studio and brings a unique and helpful perspective to the grappling conversation. For starters, she's a female in a sport with a heavy male presence. Additionally, she falls into a very lightweight class. So in this episode, you can look to learn strategies for dealing with larger opponents, tactics on how to pick safe training partners if you are a female, if you are a male, how to be a respectful and helpful training partner on the mats, how training with females can improve your grappling technique if you are a male, Are lizards just snakes with legs? And much, much more. Levi and I found this episode very insightful, fun, and full of great details. We hope you enjoy. All right, we're live. So I was thinking of some banter to help get us started here. Okay. And I was thinking, Eileen, first you should probably introduce yourself. Oh, God, okay. Um, I'm Eileen. I have been training for, I think, maybe five years now, I think. I started in 2019. So Sounds probably about right. Five Did years. you train straight through or? Yeah. Really? Consistent. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I'm pretty consistent on my training. There was a couple months that I was scattered, but otherwise, yeah, very consistent. I take jujitsu very seriously. So, yeah, it's like a second job to me. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah. That's, so, over those uh, like five years, so how many days a week do you typically train? Um, When I was in the gi, I would train Monday. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, oh, Saturday, and then Sunday that is at 6 holy PM. smokes. Yeah, she's yeah. not joking. Yeah, I really, really love jujitsu. So that's wild. Six, yeah. Like, is that six days a week? Yeah, I would. I would pretty much train all week. And then there was a few months where um, my husband and I were trying for a child, so we okay. weren't sure. So I would just be very sporadic. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, yeah, it'll be waiting for you when you come back, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly. That's cool. Okay, so. Here's something I was wondering, because you actually had a video go viral, right? You know, with I your did. with your slick moves. Mm-hmm. And then I was thinking about that uh, other move that you were doing that was similar to it, just so the audience can uh, pick up what we're putting down here. It was like a calf slicer, right? And then you threw your leg over the top? Right, right, yeah. Okay. So if you completely created a new technique that was going to take the grappling world by storm, well, would you would you name it after yourself or something else? Oh, that is a very good question. I think I would not name it after myself. No. <laughs> it's too much <laughs> too much pressure on me. Um, I don't know what I would name it. No. Honestly, I would probably relate it to food somehow because yeah. that's how I relate my jujitsu oh. moves. You were said the panini press? Yeah, we like, ooh, before. Today, I we like that. about the panini press. Panini yeah. press. What is the panini press? Uh, that was your variation for clamp guard yeah clamp guard yeah i just mm. think of it as a panini press <laughs> i like it i have to relate my submissions and stuff to, to food. food that's cool so. the whole food based system yeah exactly <laughs> go for the grilled cheese go yeah. for the grilled cheese you know for the <laughs> you guys have a whole deli section right here ham yeah. sandwich that'd be panini. funny what if you strat it you like split it by food yeah. type so it'd be like deli related things were related yeah. to the legs right you know and yeah. then uh, maybe Someone continental slices. is like arm thing. Do a linguine, get the linguine, you know, or something, you know. That'd be kind of funny. It seems yeah. like <laughs> most names though for moves are like last names. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. you got the Spence. Yeah. Or you got the Faiko. Faiko. But it's like the Kimura. I mean, someone that's like Kimura Von Flu. Von Flu is his uh, last name. Does that seem to follow pretty much just Brazilian? Named things? Uh, trying to think, do you know any? No. I think there are some other ones. Oh, I guess Kimura was Japanese. Kimura was Japanese. But it was uh, named by a Brazilian. Oh, the... Remember after... Well, Darce. I, know, I, think, I don't know. Uh, is Darce the last name? Darce is the last name. Joe, yeah. But that was an American. Oh, okay. Joe Darce. Yeah, I, I probably made that up. <laughs> 20, uh, <laughs> Joe Dirt. <laughs> Joe Dirt. Yeah. There's something like that, but... I think they just call the moves because that person keeps hitting this unique thing, so they just call it the... Which you know, makes sense. The what about you, Levi? Joke. Would you, if you created a brand new spanking, like legit move, would, would you name to, it I'd have Van Steppen? I would have to use my, my middle name with it. The Monk. The Monk. Monk, monk Choke. Monk, yeah. monk. If you step cool. on them, you could call it the Van Steppen, though. Van Steppen. Yeah. Van Steppen. <laughs> You've been Van Stepped. Yeah. <laughs> You've been Dutch Stepped. <laughs> Dutch stepped. You could call it the it Wooden is, Clog. Uh, <laughs> yeah, the Wooden Clog. <laughs> That's mean. 
So it's uh, Belgian, I think. Belgian. Belgian. Oh. Yeah. Belgian, because Van Steppen, Steppen is like from the steps. Yeah, from, Van is like Vaughn, right? From the like river steps. Mm. So, but it's weird because I grew up 18 years right by the river. So I need mm. work. My whole, ma- my whole name means the unbreakable monk that lives by the river. That's kind of spooky. Isn't that weird? That's, cool. that's a little mysterious. Isn't that yeah. cool? Like, what does Eileen okay. mean? Because ever there's always those like name that's true. generator. You don't know things. what it means. I don't. Think oh I know well, what guess it what? Means. We have the internet the right internet. here. Wait, what are you looking? We should have had a uh, ChatGPT be our guest. Oh, uh, let's see. Wouldn't it be amazing if we had ChatGPT in the background all the time, and we It'd can be just a Jamie. Like, we can just like snap it. It probably Jamie. means like small mouse. <laughs> small <laughs> mouse. I saw a little. Oh, thing. here we go. This is just based off the bump dot com. Oh, that. because it's like uh, Eileen is a girl name given. Uh, do 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 do. Meaning, little bird, strength, bird. strength. and desired. There we go. You are a strong little bird. Yeah, that, that everybody has a desire. desires. Yeah, apparently. Oh. Right. Yeah, isn't that interesting? Yeah. That's What's your middle name? Pretty accurate, Melissa. 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 I'm looking Levi up to see if it's unbreakable. It's true. Joined. Yeah. Joined in harmony. Yeah. What Levi means but, according to VeryWellFamily.com. That's from the Bible. Hold on. Let me go to the bump. The bump dot com have seems to guys, be our, our main source here. Have you used urban the urban dictionary? Oh fine. Oh, oh yeah. Wild. That one gets that yeah, one gets crazy. Maybe that it might not wild. be the best source for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I looked mine up on the urban dictionary once and it was like it, it was just rough. Like it <laughs> literally said like she's gonna beat your BS, Oh, That's funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I guess we we can mark episodes as explicit if you want, Eileen. If we want to go down the rabbit hole of that before we talk about more jujitsu. Yeah. Um, Eileen's maybe, holding back a lot right now. Yeah. All of her swears. My okay. Well, here's my the next question I had for you guys. Then mm-hmm. we'll keep the pace rolling. Mm-hmm. What would be your grappling walkout music, Eileen? Uh, I like fifties music. Fifties. <laughs> yeah. It would no. probably be some Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Or, Kayla and I actually listen to a lot of that. Yeah. It's nice for like slow dancing with your partner. Dean mm-hmm. Martin, maybe. Yeah. Just throw everyone off. That'd be I a good know. idea. No, it's like classy. Yeah. I really. No it's mountain just, high. No. <laughs> back. You know, something like that? Yeah. Um, no river wild enough, baby. Is that, that's how that song goes. It right? would probably be like, was it Dante Martin? Ain't that a kick in the head? No matter yeah. where you are. That'd be good for like an MMA walkout. Ain't that a kick in the head? Yeah, good kick. Yeah. Keep going, Matt. Yeah. yeah. I like that song. Matt, what will yours be? I was asking you guys a question. No, I didn't come prepared. <laughs> Oh, see, I would have a hard time not doing like Holla Back Girl or something like that. That would be Because I think it'd be funny. Like that. Yeah, <laughs> maybe yes. something like that. Um, is bananas. <laughs> yeah, we're like walking I in the up. spider webs. Leave a message and I'll call you back. I don't know. So maybe some no doubt. Side of Matt I've never seen. Yeah, no, it actually goofy. it depends what kind of mood I was in because I actually like Enrique Iglesias a lot too. So I might mm. do that. Oh, That'd be kind of funny. Huge into him. Um, and I used to listen to that back in high school, and it was funny. Is you think people would make fun of you for it, but people didn't really make fun. Of me. I don't know why. Do you want to be made fun of for it? No, okay. but I was just, you think like uh, a teenage boy liking Enrique Ingr- 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 Iglesias would like catch some heat. For yeah, like three maybe. months, my mom would wake me and my brother up with that soundtrack every single day. You should have played Don't she, Turn like, Off the Lights it. right before night when you had to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> I know like the soundtrack like or that that one vo- or album like backwards and forwards. Escape? Yeah. Escapar? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that sounded so accurate. <laughs> But uh, I don't know. I would have a hard time because uh, on one note, you want to like pump yourself up, yeah. right? Yeah. So like, there's that, and uh, I'm it's you like know pretty chill. So thing, like, yeah. yeah, I'd probably not want to like defeat myself just in the walkout. So yeah. you yeah. know, yeah. but at the same time, trying too hard is kind of weird too. Yeah. So come back to me, Levi. What would you do? <laughs> Outcast, uh, so fresh and so clean. Yeah. So fresh You've thought of this so before. Clean. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like kind of like a little self confidence thing. Mm. Like just, but it's kind of like a little bit of hip-hop and chill yeah that's true i've literally smacked my face before a training. match before training yeah really i believe i witnessed it i had yeah. to just get myself in the mood and mm. i smacked the it wasn't really out of either my face. it was like whoa yeah holy smokes i, I yeah. threw down I'm like that's myself. what your coach is supposed to do to you before yeah. you start going out <laughs> that's well it's hard because it's like being so little you know you gotta bring the fire yeah i have gotta to power up i have to do something for myself to get myself amped up Mm. before I get smacked. There is something about like the will to win being yeah. important. Yeah. And if you come in, the everybody has those days, right? Where they come in, they go, hey, okay, I'm here. I'm here. That's a win, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, But then there's some days you're like, I'm bringing the fire, right? Like, and you have to like, you know it. And there's a stark difference between 
I'm here and I'll do it versus like mm-hmm. I'm here to do very well, right? Yeah. You competed effort. twice. Four times. Four Whoa. times. I competed four times. I didn't realize yeah. that. We have to talk more about that. So let's oh, see what's boy. here. All I know was the, what was it, the white and blue belt tournament that Aaron had? And then the one yeah. here. Yeah. So my first ever competition, I was a brand new white belt. Not even one stripe, just like two months into it. Mm-hmm. Whoa. And yeah, I was like, okay, I'm going to go out there. I'm going to try it. So Got where was it? Was it grapp- grappling industries? industries? Yeah. Okay. That's cool that you did it. And that was a total like mental blackout for me. And I think that kind of stuck with me because mm. there was like thousands of people there. And sure. in my brain, I'm like, oh, they're all watching me. When yeah, makes there's sense. There's like two mm. people watching mm-hmm. me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I got smashed on that one. Learned a lesson. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to try it again. And then that was Aaron's competition. Okay. And I competed twice there. And the first one I did really good. I think it was just because it was in my gym that I know. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I feel That's comfortable big here. Yeah, and then I went against another girl. She smashed me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's fine. Like, I'm not, I don't ever hate people that smash me. It's like, it doesn't matter to me. Yeah. <clears throat> so we're still friends. And then I competed at your um, tournament, which is at Theory, obviously, mm-hmm. and got smashed. But yeah, it's just all just, I have to work on not mentally blacking out. It's so- just a total, like, once they touch me, I'm like, I forgot everything I was trained to do. Mm. Mm. <laughs> yeah. You just try to do like too much where you're going like, oh, there's a million things I could do right here. No, it's actually the opposite because we talked about before the theory one yeah. that she had like a go-to strategy. Yeah, I did. She was going to yeah. snap them down and go to the rear turtle. And and then I was going to do the rodeo show because yeah. it was in the gi and everything like that. And then I'm trying to snap her down and she's so strong and I'm like, Uh-oh. now I'm blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, I have no idea what's happening. Mm. Maybe maybe it comes down to like your game plan having like something that if it doesn't go your way, it doesn't put you in a bad spot. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, because if you're you, for your snap down, you're doing a collar tie, right? Yeah. I was doing, I don't know exact. Like I said, it's just a mental no, so it was the gi. It was in the gi? Yeah. Oh, so did you do so from the collar? So snap down was more like the, like we saw at Grappling Industries yeah, last time, more like trying to like get their hands on the floor. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then she was going to use that to mm. pass the, around at that point. Do the rodeo choke, but. Yeah, it just all fell apart, and then I was like, no, I'm mentally not here. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's important because we've talked a lot about that with uh, tournament prep and getting people kind of set, and we've actually talked about that many times. It just in general, like, for, like I'm planning on competing next month for a tournament, and mm-hmm. I'm almost taking more of the Marcelo approach where I'm like, eh, I'm going to pick like one thing, and I'm going to just guide everything towards it. Yeah. It's like, because there's, if you, let's say you focus on a snap down and suddenly they're not going, mm-hmm. like you said, you can get that blackout moment versus kind of just, you know, playing the, the stand-up game, like maybe having one go-to, but Matt Matt did that very well with, uh, well, you, you tried to play everything towards like the Russian tie. Yeah, I did a lot right? of two-on-one and then I, or under, uh, going for an underhook from standing. And then you went single eventually that one. Then I, one yeah, guy. I went ankle pick to a single, yeah. kind of like, it was, was like an ankle pick single that thing. That was slick, I saw Yeah? That. Okay, yeah, cool. Slick, yeah. But I think that's kind of the idea that I think standing-wise you need to like duel it up. Mm-hmm. You have to put two things A&P. together. I think. What's that? A and a, an a, yeah, and a, B and a B. Like, even it might not be two techniques. It's just like uh, Jordan's a lot and all his sweep single stuff. Mm-hmm. You have to like fake one thing and then get the other thing. Is there like a standing move that you feel pretty confident with that if you competed again, you'd want to funnel your starting Ooh, game to? That's a good question. I like, I like to be on my back. That's where I'm comfortable. Okay. So I will try to, Im- I'm really bad at names, but Iminari, yeah. whatever mm-hmm. role. You got it. Like, I'll do any type of roll I can to get to the legs. Does it, So when you do an Imanari at like Grappling Industries, you're going to the ground, but it's not conceding a position. Correct. If you stay on the ground after you do the roll, does that is that cool or do they get a takedown? I don't or do because they don't have advantages they anymore, have right? Such weird. That and IBJJF, they have such weird point system. I think you take a you take a negative you just gotta, point or whatever. You just got to get to where you need to go. <laughs> yeah. and just the not hard worry part was it. the match you had with that guy who jumped close guard oh mm-hmm. i've watched that like five or six times you watched it more than me did no oh, I, I did i care <laughs> six times more than you do <laughs> <laughs> you just but say? but the problem was because i couldn't understand how you went a whole match and there was zero points mm-hmm. but it was on the ground mm. like, why wasn't there a negative why wasn't there a? I i guess i never down? completed the like when i did my guard breaks i never completed it but no no you on know. your end i could see that but for him he like did some he made a connection and then he like pulled or jumped guard 
Like there was some you don't sort get of, points for pulling guard though. Correct, but it wasn't like a negative point for sitting down. So he he you can pull guard. You can pull guard as long as you're connected to the person. And he was. Yeah. So he he made that connection. Um. But so I say that in relation to the Iminari because if you're standing and you make the connection and go around for it, and let's say they don't get knocked down, that's fine. That's the same thing. Mm. So there's no versus if Eileen slap bumped and then she just sat. With yeah. no connection, that's the negative point. The good old butt scoot. It'd be but, interesting. Because essentially, the Iminari is a takedown. Yeah, I'm she still connected. A takedown, you're right, you're right. That's a good and point. And her hips are on the ground. I'm still connected the whole time. You yeah. can't Iminari with no connection. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, you're just rolling like a turtle. There's something to be said about theatrics, I think, too. Because oh, the judges are humans, right? If you're like, my name's Eileen, and I'm going to screw you up. And you just like go for this <laughs> dive, <laughs> you, you know? And you go for a, a, like the most aggressive Iminari <laughs> roll someone's <laughs> yeah. ever seen. Even if you stayed on the ground after that point trying to like do some type of thing, mm-hmm. I feel like they probably wouldn't give you negative points because you're pushing the pace. You're pushing. Well, it's funny because uh, Ben Schultz did that to me. This guy I know in uh, my purple belt division. And as he was throwing it, me mentally, I'm like, oh, it's the MNRI roll. Like I was just a fan of it that somebody was doing it on me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. oh, that's cool. Um, but it could definitely surprise people for sure. Yeah. So I guess uh, let's rewind a little bit. What's like started, what got you? St- started in jujitsu right like um for the audience that because we're not on video right now eileen's gigantic she's like seven feet tall yeah at least least. yeah 230 minimum i would be unstoppable (laughs) i I don't need that in my life yeah Yeah. (laughs) but uh but no so like what got you started though because it is kind of a very like male heavy sport right it's getting it's getting more and more female so which is really Mm -hmm. cool and uh you know, but like, what made you like see it and go like, I need to not only do that, but now from knowing that you were training six days a week, I need to do this six days a week. So I actually never knew about jujitsu um, when I was younger because I used to watch WWE and I was like, oh my god, this yes. is awesome. <laughs> and then me and my sister, one of my sisters, would just slam each other in the living room, just trying <laughs> to do WWE, like That's Undertaker, awesome. whatever it was. And then I grew up and I'm like wow, this isn't real. And I was just absolutely crushed. And so I started to get into UFC and I'm like, wait, this is real because they're bleeding. No, <laughs> I'm okay. like, this is actually like physically real. And so um, I actually trained MMA for about a year. Oh, that's cool. And I didn't then, know that. Yeah. And then my nose, my cartilage got snapped. Yep. You're and telling me about I that. Was like, maybe I'll just stick to jujitsu. It's crazy. You don't so. even have the bump or anything. Yeah, it, I have a picture of it. You can, It was like slightly off to the side. You could see it. But um, yeah, so I was like, I don't know if I really like the striking aspect of it. Because mm. I also got head kicked once and that was not ooh, fun. Ooh, so, just inspiring. Just yeah, it was just sparring. Head, head kicks are rough. Did you, ever, did you ever have like defense. a match you were trying to get set up with? Because that was a... For MMA? Yeah. No, I just was training it. Sure. I just like hopped in because my first gym I trained MMA at was Resurgence mm-hmm. and so they're a great MMA gym like they're very well known for their MMA mm-hmm. so I tried it there and then I'm like oh maybe I'll just stick to jiu-jitsu and then I was like I love jiu-jitsu so I've always wanted to ask like is when you talk about like mixed martial arts training like mm-hmm. what does that entail like were you doing kickboxing rounds were you doing wrestling yeah I guess so- and jiu-jitsu as well too so just that kind of spread just because I know it it mixes everything so that when I hear people train it, like, is there cage work? Like, you're yeah. putting as people against a cage? Because yeah. I think they have a cage too, right? Yeah, they yeah. have an octagon there. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it's just striking, kickboxing, wrestling, jujitsu, you know, everything that you can possibly do. So you got like a little sampling of it when you're there yeah. with some of the jujitsu. That's yeah. kind of a neat idea. I yeah. never thought about that. Yeah. Go to a place that has everything if mm-hmm. you don't know, see what you gravitate see towards. Works, yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. So I just tried it. I was like, I'm all in. I'm just going to try it. And then I ended up weaning it down to just jujitsu. Well, so besides obviously getting kicked in the head and breaking your nose, you know, those little things, you know, yeah, just little things. So was it the the damage you were taking in striking that pushed you away from it? Or was there something in jujitsu that you liked that drew you to it? Or yeah, both? so it was both. Honestly, my mom and dad always told me they're like, you have such like a nice face why are you going to let people punch it i'm like honestly that's such a parent know. answer like, yes. i don't know why i'm doing this and then <laughs> yeah and then i'm like i don't want my face to be messed up so and i don't want to be mentally messed up by getting yeah. head kicked mm-hmm. yeah so yeah and then there was something in jujitsu i'm like wait it's not really my body against 
another body. It's my mind against another mind. Mm. Like, it's just, it's such a mind control game. So I just, I just think it's such a wonderful art. I like the, uh, the answer you had. I don't know why I'm doing, because actually, yeah. that's a good example of like, you don't get to pick your passions. They pick mm-hmm. you. Yeah. It's true. I'm a big believer of that. Yeah. And it's just, it's cool to hear that because, um, I feel like some people who do jujitsu do it because they're like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm trying it out. And then they eventually might actually transform into the other one. But yeah. it sounds like you were like, this is awesome. You're like, it's like part of your being where you're like, this is part of my soul. I have to do this thing. I want to do this thing really bad. And uh, and that's cool to hear. Yeah. That's super cool to hear. Well, even the being brave enough to like go and join a gym and be like, yeah. I kind of know what this is about, but to jump in and say, I'm going to experience this. Uh, yeah, that took th- courage. That's such a difficult thing for most people yeah. to come into a gym and go like, um, I was even talking to that one gentleman before today and just like no martial arts experience, okay. jumping in and experiencing something like you don't know what the group is, you don't know what the activity really is yeah. and be like, you're not well versed in it. But I, I think a lot of times when I've met people that say like, oh, you're so lucky you've got something like you're passionate about. Yeah. Honestly, it's like just jumping into something mm-hmm. and trying it, you know, like going to like a smorgasbord of a table, like just try stuff. Eventually something just bites at you and you're like oh i want to keep exploring this so here's another question for you okay. with the whole jumping into it and whatnot Fire watching away. ufc uh so levi and i were super big nerds on like kung fu flicks and stuff like that when we were younger mm-hmm. and like anime and like dragon ball z and stuff we're basically the same person yeah we you pretty much somehow grew up not ever knowing each other <laughs> but knowing lo- loving all the same stuff okay did you also enjoy besides like wwe and ufc which were you know there's like a human element to it did you have any did you like animes or did you like like kung fu films or anything? Would you watch it and be like, oh, that's awesome? Or was it more like martial arts films? Whatever. Yeah, martial art films. No, I yeah. didn't. You know? I didn't know. I didn't watch any of it. I played a lot of Tony Hawk. Oh, <gasps> Pro Skater Forza. 1. <laughs> Forza Mo- yeah, Motorsport. Forza, My favorite yeah. games, probably top three games, is Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4. I'm really good at Four? pressing Y because yes. that's the grind. Oh, one. grind. I'm like, why, 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 why? <laughs> You guys yeah. play Goat Simulator three at all? Oh, Goat Simulator! No, I don't you can grind that in that, and it's but the Y button. <laughs> it's, the, it's always the Y button. That game is full of so many cameo things. That's amazing. And sometimes when I'm rolling, honestly, it'll pop in my head. I'm like, grind. I gotta press the Y button. And then <laughs> yeah. I go for the submission. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm like I gotta Tony I gotta, Hawk you. <laughs> was it left right? I'm trying to remember how to do Christ Air. Oh, Christ with, Air with, uh, with Rune. Go- yeah, that yeah. was my favorite Bork special. Because he's just like flowing through you. Like yeah. When I went snowboarding a couple of weekends ago, I literally had on my phone the Tony Hawk Pro Skater 4 soundtrack as I was snowboarding. Because I'm like, this <laughs> is the closest I'm going to get. Which one it, Which one did you play? Um, I don't remember. I just Was remember it number one? Did it have character. the warehouse level? It was old. It was, yeah. It was when I was young. Did it have so. one, one female character? No. Elisa Steamer, right? That was uh, I don't Elisa. think there is a I'm female more character with the four in one. it. I had the one that had Jingo Fett in it. Oh, so yeah, you were much character. more evolved with that. Oh, but it's like a PS2, I think. Yeah, I was addicted to that game. It was so fun. Okay, yeah. so Forza. So you like cars, which you also, you, do you still like cars? Because obviously your husband cars. likes yeah. cars, right? Yeah, so I don't know. my husband likes cars, yeah. I somehow married another car nerd. <laughs> yeah, makes sense. So, yeah. Lines up pretty sense. well. Yeah. So when you started jujitsu, did you have like a favorite move? And has that favorite move changed Ooh, over question. the time? Oh, that is a good question. So I've always liked the legs. I think it's just because of being so small, I could just clamp onto someone's legs. Ah, okay. Um, so yeah, you do like to go to like K guardy kind of things. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. I like to do a lot of knee bars. Mm. The size of me is the size of someone's leg. So I'm, oh, like, I'm that's just fair. gonna hop on this like a koala <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and just thrust my hips into it. Yeah, that so could be a move. That could be your move. The, koala. the name, the it's koala. Like yeah. K guard and knee bar usually, right? Yeah, K yeah. K Garden U Bar. And I do like to do a lot of inverting. I learned that from my old coach Aaron mm-hmm. at Metrics. Inversion yeah. all the time. Yeah, you invert a lot. I do like to invert. Yeah, yeah. you can sneak under really easy. When in oh. doubt, curl up into a ball. <laughs> <laughs> or or you do a lot ball. of like flying submissions too. Like you dive. Yeah. Uh, like over to the side and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Yeah. So did you start off liking knee bars and you were just like, knee bars are my thing and you just kept developing it? Yeah. So I really focused in on knee bars for probably months yeah and i'm like i need to get this down and i need to figure out how to get there from any position i'm in so i really got knee bars down and then the next month i'm like okay now i need to focus on triangles Mm -hmm. and how to get there from any position and that's how i really developed my jujitsu game that's awesome yeah picking one thing and and you just came across that naturally that style yeah that's cool i really did because i'm like I am 
too small as it is. So I can't just go out there and think I'm going to get everything I want because mm-hmm. I'm not. So I need to just focus on one specific thing every time. There's a lot of wisdom there. Levi actually has a similar philosophy that what? has rubbed off on me about just like developing one skill, mm-hmm. although like to a decent degree, and then using that to kind of like bridge your way to other skills. It's a framework. Yeah. I think the biggest thing I see with people in jiu-jitsu is like, it sounds kind of weird, but like teaching them to solve their own problems. Yeah. And I think mm-hmm. sometimes if you get mastery in one thing, you understand how to develop it, then you can go do other things. Because I think that's kind of like the culture these days with jiu-jitsu. It's like you want to hop onto one trick thing or one move because it's easier to catch people when they don't know it's coming. Mm-hmm. Much more difficult to have mastery and say, I like they know a triangle is coming and there's nothing they can do to stop it. Yeah. I've rolled people yeah. that are like that and it's the scariest feeling. It's yeah. like some sort of. You feel helpless. Well, it's like a murder yeah. movie. It's like no matter how fast you run, <laughs> you it's really, going to you happen. You slip on the banana. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every single time. Yeah. It's a dream. I just running it's and I can't run. It's always the girls that are just slipping on nuts. A speck of grass. They're like, oh no. But it was a, it was the scariest thing to me. <laughs> or too. they always run upstairs. Yeah. There's no way out upstairs. What are you doing? Yeah, right? <laughs> Go in the tool shed. <laughs> yeah. All these scary weapons. Uh, but I thought that was the scariest thing when I felt that a couple high level people like they could probably say I'm getting you in triangle this, in this role and there's nothing I could do. I'm like, I must mm-hmm. have this power. Yeah. But it really comes down to the discipline to sit and focus on it. Um, yeah, I think that really comes during blue belt or purple belt, really. Blue belt's that crossover phase where it's like, I can't just grab things on you anymore. Yeah. And I have to like be you need really to good at work it. Work for it. Yeah. But you've had that a little bit, Matt, with uh with your leg injury of like focusing on other things because you were unable. Yeah. To do with my ankle being funky, or, or t- uh, take down. Gambit. Never spent this much time in butterfly guard. Yeah, yeah, yep. and it's it's been good though. And I'm I'm thinking I'm gonna keep working it a little bit just because now I'm starting to get to the point where I can start switching between guards and comboing them. Mm-hmm. And that was something I never thought about up to the point that, you know, when you first start playing like butterfly guard, you're trying to combo just the grips to be able mm-hmm. to get the you know the grips you want, and then you can go for a sweep or something. Ooh, but I, then I keep going. I, I was gonna say is the the other thing you can combo. Like, there's only so many options you can do from there. So then the combo, the jab and the cross, isn't this grip and that grip necessarily. It can also be this guard and that guard. Mm-hmm. So it can be your butterfly guard, you know, and then you're using that to get to X guard and stuff like that. To me, it's such a, like, subway station. I always think of open guards like that. It's, like, it's connecting to other things. It's not mm-hmm. a place where you chill and, like, cool, I'm at my destination. It's, like, you're using it to get eventually there. get to some place. Yeah. I was going to say, because you were talking about knee bars, mm-hmm. if you could place yourself into one submission and let's say like $1,000 to finish that submission, which Ooh, submission would it be? That is a good like question. have it decently locked in. Is it against a noob or someone who knows what they're doing? Same, same experience level. Oh, okay. It, so would, that, it would be a knee bar. Knee bar? Yeah. yeah. Easily Ooh, a knee dang. bar. Dang. Yeah. Dang. That's, like pretty, to, that's some serious knee bar confidence. To get my knee bars, yeah. <laughs> we had that, uh, was it two weeks ago for like last class? We did knee bars. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, do you have any? I'm barring it. <laughs> <laughs> I say, Barring it, and you're not gonna get away. From me. Knee bar, wow. yeah, yeah. You yeah. have a knee; it's getting barred. Yeah, you're taking it to the bar. Yeah, and That's you're breaking it. Yeah. Well, because you can pretty much lock in some knee bars, and it's like you don't need to do a ton of pressure into it. Yeah, it's but just a could, hip thrust. And you do the a behind the armpit trick. Um, I like a shotgun type of knee. Yeah. Bar. Oh, I'm just saying, just where you still have the same leg setup, but you put their like yeah, behind the it. That one leg. just seems like so brutal. Where you're just yeah, I have in. not only because. Well, I will if they're not a new person to the gym. Because gotcha. some are so spazzy that they'll try to get out of it. And a shotgun, any type of shotgun submission is so dangerous if you're trying to, like, reap on it or get out of it. So, yeah, you will probably break your knee pretty easily. Mm. So I, oh, I, that's why I never reap on any submissions. I just will, like, easily, slowly go into it. Because I, I, I never know. I'm like, I don't know if you're going to be spazzy and try to get out of it because I don't want to be the one to break your heel or I don't yeah. know, something mm-hmm. like that. That's true. That. Yeah. yeah. It's very true. So uh, so the topic that I was hoping we could dive a little bit deeper in today, we, you and I actually spoke about this a couple of weeks ago. Oh, yeah. Where like, okay, so you're a female. Like we talked about, you're seven feet tall and all those <laughs> other things. And I think you're talking about like, Reagan. That, <laughs> that's what you're um, talking about. But uh <laughs> If you, uh, she said she listens to our podcast. She's got some work coming up. So, hey, 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 what's up? Um, but so like, no, but being a smaller female, right? Mm-hmm. And so two things there, right? You're a female and you're smaller. 
and you go into a gym, what are some, let's start with safety tips that you can give other females and actually just honestly anyone um, to help select good training partners? What are some of the things you look for and what are the some, some of the Ooh, things you look for? Are you saying for? like when you're visiting a gym or just coming it, into any, any yeah, gym? Yeah, anytime any before, before you know like people, that. right? And even yeah. maybe when, maybe even beyond that, right? Like yep. even today when you go roll, do you do you use the same ocular pat down or do you have a different criteria set that you use or you just not really like worry about it anymore, you know? Well, I definitely still worry about it. Like, if somebody new walks into theory, I'm still, like, I need to take at least a week to watch them train Mm -hmm. against everybody. Like, not just one specific person. I can't just take one day and be like, okay, yeah, I'm I'm okay to train with this guy. Yeah. I need to watch their moves. I need to watch how fast they are. I need to see if they reap on a submission. Um, Just because of being smaller, it's so, like, it's just a fact that a guy can lay at me and I'm toast. Mm. Like, that's just how it is, being so small. So, yeah, I just see if they're trying to just be a meathead mm. or if they actually care about the art and they're just flowing, flowing with it. So, okay, you had a couple criteria there, it sounds like. One is uh, you watch them with other partners, right? Yeah. And yeah. I think that, that there's a lot of wisdom there, too, because the way someone rolls with one person might not be the same. They roll with another. They might get really scrappy with somebody because you mm-hmm. both had that energy and they were like, let's do it. So and then you see him kind of be more a little patty cake with yeah. the other person, right? <laughs> yeah. That's good. It shows variation. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. You were looking at how fast they move, mm-hmm. right? And I, for that, are you looking to see that they're not? Are they moving with intention with speed? Is that what it is, or is it just if they're moving really fast? I'm just trying to see if they're pretty much where their limbs are going when they're moving fast. Like okay. if they're just flaring their limbs and just trying to jump on you, that's not going to work out. Okay, for me. so it's like speed and spazziness. Yeah, because I would say like Jordan's very fast. Jordan mm-hmm. But he's also the, one of the he's most controlled. Weird, yeah, he's one yeah. of the most controlled grapplers I've ever. Like, I'm pretty sure you could have a bro- broken arm. Yeah. And you could roll with him and not get hurt. He's you a, know? <laughs> he's an animal in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. It's probably like watching like a smooth transition. Like they're, they're aware yeah. of what they're doing. Yeah. Their body awareness. Yeah. Oh, okay. So you had, so body awareness, how they roll with other people, re- re- like ripping on submissions, mm-hmm. right? Um, what was the others? Uh, I think those were kind of the main ones. Yeah. Anything else? Um, and honestly, I don't know if this is stereotypical, but their body type, because mm. you do get a lot of big muscular guys that will just look at a girl and be like, yeah, I'm going to smash her. Mm. And it's really, just, that's funny. Yeah. You think it'd be the opposite where they go like, I have so much more capacity that they'll be like, Hey, cool. Let's do it. You know, like, and that's another thing is rolling with a very, like a guy that has just a very high ego is I sometimes am worried about submitting them if they're newer because mm. I don't know how they're going to react. Like I've been to a gym where I've gotten screamed at. Yeah. And it made me cry because I heel hooked someone. <laughs> By the way, if anybody's listening who's screamed at somebody because they heel hooked somebody <laughs> and it was totally <laughs> legit and not mean, you know, like, yeah, you guys can get bent. <laughs> you know? We have tissues here for you that will take, yeah. one. We'll take one out. Yeah. No, the tox- that's a good sign of a toxic training culture. Yeah, so right? it definitely made me open my eyes to a lot of things. Because, I mean, if you're going to like go ape crap on me because I submitted you, mm-hmm. I'm going to be scared. Like, that's just how it is. I'm like, yeah. if you, Matt, if you went crazy on me, if I submitted <laughs> you, you're a huge dude. I'm going to try to yeah. run away. I'm going to be <laughs> yeah. scared, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like, I know my limits. That brings up so. a, th- a thought I never considered either is like, when you're doing the engagement, you know, it, this is a game we play in here, right? Mm-hmm. And it has combative elements, right? It is a combat activity. Yeah. Um, but like, just because you submit someone and they have a hissy fit or like maybe that, like the scenario you ran into mm-hmm. where it's like, it still doesn't mean they're not dangerous outside of it, like walking to your car yeah. or mm-hmm. like, you know, like things like that, right? Yeah. Where um, I just, it's just something the, that uh, I think is, guys need to be more aware of, you know? It's such an interesting perspective because I think, if anyone's new to the sport, that maybe if they have awareness of like wrestling or whatever, and some person who's 50 pounds heavier than them and muscle submits them, they can be like, ooh, that makes sense. Like yeah. you're big and strong and you can kind of do what you want. But it's very unassuming, mm-hmm. someone who's much lighter than you yeah. and now feels like you're trying to give resistance and you couldn't do anything who's so much smaller and oh, you know, yeah. nibble. Like that's a weird feeling. Especially I, in the gi, because like you have I, the rope around the neck, yeah. you could probably yeah. just like, yeah, just yeah. freaking yeah. pops well, and skulls. And the difficult part is with jujitsu, you have to say, I give up. Mm-hmm. 
Like she, she could hold somebody down and maybe they could be upset, but this is like forcing someone to say, I quit. And that could be a hard ego it is, stroke. Yeah. I've definitely, I've had somebody at Theory and bless his heart. He's such a sweetheart. Um, he messaged me just out of the blue and he's like, you know, you made me, re-, and he's, he's a big guy. It's Aaron, you know, Aaron mm-hmm. from here, the tattooed guy. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know how to explain oh, that's good. it. Um, he messaged me and he's like, you made me realize that I can't just use my strength on you. Like, I need to use technique because mm. that's all I have to rely on. I can't, my noodle arms are not going to outstrength a man. Mm. It's just facts. So I need to rely on technique and being fast. Mm. To yeah, because I don't think many people when they come in here, they have witnessed something like with jiu-jitsu where it's like good, solid technique and strategy can make it very comparable for mm-hmm. strength and, and size and speed. Yeah. And it's like most people aren't ready for that. Mm. You know, to be like, look how nimble you are moving around and creating frames and escaping. And then people like that can make you feel like very brutish of how you're doing. Yeah. So someone who like yeah. understands the art and sees how, because you have to rely so much on technique. Yeah, that's all I have. Right? Yeah. To see that, like I had that woman visit from Washington um, from a Rob school. I can't remember her name off the top of my head. I'm so sorry. I'm horrible with names. Was Solarity or whatever. Uh, wait. Are you, the one who works Washington. on the one who works on the on the windmills? No, because she she, she I, sounds cool. She was yeah. super cool. She yeah, she was like a windmill but tech. She was like a ninety oh, some awesome. pound brown belt. Oh, the one you were telling me about. Yeah, yeah. that had a okay. wonderful picture. She's got reverse neon belly on my neck. Oh, but she's like, sorry, this is all I could do. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, and you're fine. I loved it because she was so technical, and suddenly I stopped everything physically with my body i'm like i have to just completely trade with her skill for skill Mm -hmm. and i just felt so out of touch yeah Yeah. it was wonderful it was like because in here we're here developing the skill if you want to develop your attributes like you know there's some other good um outlets for that but it's like yeah totally like when you're there and seeing the the results is like you feel like you want to respond technically yeah i just and i've i've been to gyms where i've gotten comp or not compliments i've gotten um like, I'll roll with a new guy that I've never seen. I don't even know his name, you know? Mm. And I'm just bouncing around from gym to gym, and he'll say, oh, I won't go too hard on you. Don't worry. Yeah. And it's like... Mm. It's like is that bad, no or is idea. it good? Sometimes it's like, okay, thank you. Like, thank you for being aware of that, but also, like, you don't know who I am. You don't know what I can do. You don't know... Mm. Like, you have you don't, you don't even know what, what belt I am. You don't even know my name. Like, yeah. Okay. So sometimes it's like a good thing, and then other times they say it as in like you're this little thing. Yeah. I'm like, don't worry, I'm not gonna toss so, you. So here, let's make this actionable. Mm-hmm. So the the words, the message might be lost in some of the words mm-hmm. sometimes. So like as far as like what people choose. Mm-hmm. So if a guy is trying to say, because I think I've actually said that to females, where I'm like, don't worry, like I'm I'm not gonna be a jerk. Essentially, is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. What would be the best way to word what a great, that type of thing? I love that. Yeah, you know? so I think approaching it, which you have good intentions, but I think approaching it as in, don't worry, I'm not going to be a jerk. I think you should just say before you roll with them, hey, how would you like me to roll with you? Oh, okay. Just so you can give them the option to say it instead of assuming like they might be worried about something, mm-hmm. you know? Okay, that's a good idea. Turn it back to them yeah. and be like, hey. It might be from how do you want to do this? My perspective as a male too, but like, I think someone who's like 140 pounds as a male, I don't think they get that same like thing because you just assume like you can just take it. Yeah. Like if you're a 130 pound male or 140 pound male, I don't think other males are going, oh, like I, don't worry, I won't be a jerk to you. Yeah. Like I think they just assume like I'm just gonna smash, which sucks yeah. too because it's the same. Yeah. Si- it's a Hunter's size. talked about that. Yeah. Hunter is yeah. a good example of that. It's mm-hmm. like he's smaller, but it's like do someone who's He's 220 cool. still is the same, yeah. no matter if you're male or female. You know, it's like, it's a... Hunter's radically strong, too. He's oh, like radically strong. See, I lean muscles. <laughs> yeah. I would say, we used to do concrete stuff, too. Yeah. So I think, like, he's got concrete strength. Yeah. But it's like you said, I think, like when Matt said, the wording for males can come off as, like, taking care, but that can still come off as, you know, not not yeah. good at all. You you said something there, too. Intention. Intention, Right? Yeah. Like, their, their vibe, right? Mm-hmm. If they're like, hi, is it... That's probably, like... 80% of it, right? It's just mm-hmm. like, if you're being like, hi, hello, training partner, would Sociable, you like to train? Yeah. Like, yes, I'd like to train training partner versus yeah. like, <laughs> I'm yeah. grunting, you know? Like, or, <laughs> or the other thing is, I can tell. That's pretty good. So there's, 
There's two things. Is one, I can tell that I don't want to roll with them if I'm on the other side of the mat and then they make eye contact with me and then they wave me over with a finger. Oh. That, that to me is so cocky. That's like, mm. yeah, get over here. And I hate that so much, especially if I don't know you. Mm. That's just something to me that is like a, a red flag. You to should me. start doing that to people. Yeah. It's true. And then another thing be for- the aggressor. <laughs> <laughs> start calling people yeah, over yeah. to you. Get, get over, over here. here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and then the other thing is if I don't know you and you look me up and down mm. and then ask me to roll, I'm not going to roll with you. Mm. Okay. To me, that I don't know what that means. So I'm just going to not. It's not like you're carrying weapons. It's not like they have to be like, am I in danger? Well, <laughs> yeah. Also, like, a, like a, well, because you're physically contacted with someone. So if you look me up and down, I'm going to mm. be like, huh? don't know what that means yeah so yeah that's true i'm just gonna stay away from you that's a good idea so men if you're listening don't be a jerk don't, okay don't be weird don't i think that's what it comes women. down to right <laughs> yeah don't look at women <laughs> yeah yes i'd like yeah. to roll <laughs> covering yeah. your eyes Put i've always sure on. yeah we can definitely roll <laughs> i've always thought that was <laughs> such an important thing with many jiu-jitsu gyms of just you could tell kind of the culture of a gym by how many females are also there too yes yeah. of just like i've it, and this, again, this is my personal opinion. And I, I like that there's some places that will have uh, like women's only classes, mm-hmm. right? To have that kind of space for people to to work with other women. Uh, but some of the other schools I've seen that have had that, they have not like gone over to like, let's say the the, the general population classes that are open for everybody. Yeah. But usually they kind of will stay off to the side. And I think it's because of reasons like that, that I feel uh, coaches or owners, whoever, don't do a well enough job of like being aware of those filters for men, yeah. like, you know, how they interact with, with women, you know, on the mats. Cause for a lot of gyms, like that's not a normal thing. Mm-hmm. So like you said, you can get some brutish guys that just don't know how to articulate a themselves. Woman, a woman can do it too. A yeah. Woman, oh, hundred percent. Yeah. They oh. can sexualize that's a, great, great a man point. too. Yep. I mean, oh, like, it's same totally thing. Awesome. Hey, cross, I was thinking. At that point. I was thinking about? like uh, like British. a woman being like, oh, you know, and another woman being like, get over here, like, <laughs> no, 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 that's no, funny. We've talked about that before too, of just like the low hanging fruit yeah. when it comes to to grappling. It's like yeah. there, you are in situations where it just like looks, you know, pretty compromising. If you can't handle that maturity to say we're here doing this art form, yeah, and this grappling art, there's a lot of people that just they could be fine with, let's say, the same sex, same person, just. Mm-hmm. You smash him, but then it's like anytime there's that crossover, it's just like you can't manage maturity, you know. Yeah. Like, and you should write, Don't be weird on your wall, don't like be, for don't, like your don't rules. Be a dick. Don't, don't be yeah. weird, don't be weird. <laughs> you know, honestly, I think like don't be weird is a good rule. Don't look like, at me, what? <laughs> don't look at me, yeah. yeah. Don't look, don't look <laughs> no, at no one, kidding. don't look at Eileen, <laughs> but those, don't be weird, but know? those are those but, like uh, social cues. Like, you've, I, I loved your wording you, you said not that long ago of like, you don't know me. Yeah. Like you have to develop these relationships with people and friendships with people where it's like, yeah, now you can be silly, you can be funny, yeah. you can I let joke Levi around. look me up and down all the time, man. Yeah. Even when he's not looking, I look yeah. up and down. <laughs> Sorry, Kayla. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you have to have that. She knows. You have to <laughs> I come home smelling like Levi all the yeah. time. <laughs> we all do. That's so funny. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. We're very close here. But it's like I think that's like a weird uh or I should say a difficult thing to articulate that like social contract or that social yeah. like, you know, you know it's, it's like having like dark humor and dark jokes with your friends. Mm-hmm. Like you can, there's some things you can start crossing over into because there's that unspoken nonverbal thing between each other. Yeah. I think okay. some people have a difficult time like jumping into those things or making those con- those comments and it's like, oh, like not the space for it. I think uh, with like also just not being a weirdo, like, and I don't mean that in like the fun, lovable way, but mm-hmm. just, I should say being a creep would yeah. that be a, probably yeah. a better way to put it? Yeah. yeah. You either are or you aren't. Sorry. It's just yeah. the reality. Like, oh. I don't think you can teach a creep to not be, you like, they can act like not a creep, which is good. That's yeah. an improvement. But if they're a creep deep down, I think they're just going to be. A I would creep. say, if, you know, an know. almost like more intense word would be like a predator. Yeah. Ooh. It sounds intense. That sounds cool, though. We should oh, give them a different predator. name. <laughs> you know? Sorry, the predator. Yeah. Predator's welcome. Predator's welcome. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, there's a, it's like you're, uh, utilizing a platform Mm -hmm. for other needs Mm -hmm. right Mm. it's like you're you're coming in there where it's like oh here's these couple women you know to be like i'm gonna make an effort to create these interactions and things like that and it's like those are things that owners and coaches wherever like have to be aware of because you know you want to create a safe 
space for everybody. Mm-hmm. Right, like you just said, males and females and, mm-hmm. and everybody. Yeah. Um, just be cool and have a good training time. But people want to use this space, you know, we've talked about it before, like Eileen, like politics and things like that with jujitsu yeah. and martial arts. Yeah. It's like, same with work. It's like anything that doesn't immediately relate to our activity right now mm-hmm. as, as the group stays off the mats. It's like you are there having friendships with people. You're saying you're Do, not a financial advisor, marriage I, I try counselor. My best. Yes. <laughs> um, you know, I try my best sometimes. Uh, but you have to keep all those things off the mats. Like it's things like even dating. It's like that. That's like things that build up slowly over time on mats of like friendships and people and or even just figuring out like similar personality types or traits. I heard a funny dating rule. I like to hear it. OK, this is something you'd have to instill. So at some point, if your school runs long enough. Yeah. Two people are going to be interested in each other. That's- right. And uh, besides you and I. You said that with us. What rule were you but, applying? But. Uh, if okay, if two people start dating at your or, or you know at your school, yes, have like a rule that if one of them quits, the other person has to pay their tuition for six months. There was there was Jesus. there was that's, one, that was a Craig Jones one, and yeah, I'm like, that's actually I, I a really good hilarious. idea because seriously, you're screwing that up. And if the relationship doesn't go well, it's gonna like so mess up the training it, environment, it right? Makes, yeah, it, pay your taxes. It, it makes yeah. sense, but I'm I'm gonna give a hot take once off of that. Okay, okay. Also, jujitsu gyms benefit off of people connecting and having connections as a school so if you come let's we all have our biases because i know like you know at all the gyms we've we've been at it's like oh this person's showing up tonight or this person's showing up or Mm -hmm. i'm coming with this person so it's your friends but it's these connections like these people that you want to connect with and naturally by human law someone's going to have more of a connection with this person and and have something so that's like the positive side so if someone breaks up and doesn't you know one person doesn't come back or whatever that's to me like the price I pay for the the That's positive fair. side. Also, of it. what adults. So what I don't want is the chronicness, and we talked about this too. It's like the chronicness of are they always grabbing someone to date in the gym? Ooh, where it's like yeah. they break up and here's the new person, like some males or females, like mm-hmm. the new person they date and it breaks up. Plenty of jujitsu dot com. Yeah. <laughs> what? Plenty of fish. Plenty oh, of- <laughs> that's the most niche thing. Plenty of grab- dating <laughs> profile would be like, how long does she like feet? Yeah. I like heel hooks a lot. Oh, yeah, me too. <laughs> Great. It's amazing. Just send me a picture of your knees. <laughs> yeah, your knees, but it's very knee barbable. <laughs> yeah. We oh, should train awesome. sometime. I bet those will snap. <laughs> <laughs> Great. This is disgusting. <laughs> oh, that's funny. But I think there's a, there's a pros and cons. But to me, with like even behaviors between uh, members or dating or whatever, it's the chronicness that I, I see. And we've talked about the, you know, mm-hmm. like I said before of like repeatable yeah. actions Fenders, amongst yeah. different people versus like things that one person has with each other. Like, let's say someone dates and they break up and it's like you never see anything with anybody else here again. Mm-hmm. It's like whatever. But it's like it's the chronicness. Like I knew one gym, not local, that there was a guy that was like one of the head coaches and he would date like four or five of the women that would, you know, would Whoa, come in, but it would be, like, it'd, I don't think so, but, oh but it'd be like, it'd be like a, tur- <laughs> it'd, it'd be like a turnover where they'd break up and they would, they would leave the school and then the next person would come in and it'd be like the same thing over and over again. Mm-hmm. So I'm going to make a hard pivot here. Let's do it. Okay. okay. Back to Eileen. Oh, what? So. <laughs> Sorry, Levi. <laughs> no. but, My podcast. But, uh, well, I took over. But no, so, okay. We've talked about a couple of different things before we move on to like strategies for lightweight grapplers. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was curious if there's any other tips that you could give for men to be good training partners with females. Yeah, that's a good question. Um, I think just feel them out, honestly. Like, don't just ask them how they want to roll. Leave it o- totally open to them because, mm-hmm. you know, scientifically, you're more likely to smash them. Like, you're just physically stronger. Size matters in gr- a, grappling. Yeah, it does. Guys feel it too mm-hmm. against other guys. Yeah. Like, yeah. yeah someone exactly. bigger, it is like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> this, yeah. Right. This is heavy. <laughs> like, now, try being a mouse with a gorilla. Okay. <laughs> like, it's, it's really hard. But yeah, I think just feel them out. Try to match their level of technique. Like, don't try to outstrength them. Just match their level of technique. That's all you got to do. And then, yeah, just give them, I would just give them like, a little bit of a fight and then let them work their stuff mm. and then give them a little bit more of a fight and then let them, you know, work their stuff. But I don't know. Yeah. I think just, just don't be a butthole. Yeah. <laughs> I mm-hmm. feel like really just tone that's back fair. your ego. Cause if a woman submits you, that's it. Like you're, you're just going to get submitted. There's no, you know, don't cry about it in a way, I guess. Yeah. No, that's, that's a good point. 
I like that. Well, I think as we all get more experience with jujitsu, I think we just start detaching like yeah. the identities with them. If like, you're in jujitsu, you lose more than you win. Yeah, that's, well, that's the reality of it. It's more like win or learn. That's with like with us that. rolling, like we have a pretty good even pace sometimes. Where it's like you'll start going ahead of me, and I'll start yeah. like, laying some weight with you and things yeah. like that. And I'm not even yeah. that big, but it's like. Eileen, if we were the same weight, you'd beat me. I know, I'm just, I don't like, want her all the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> just Please just don't gain 100 pounds. I told, yes. I told Levi the other night when we were rolling, I'm like, one day when I get bigger than you, I'm going yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to get your nightmares <laughs> begin. Yeah. <laughs> but it's like, it's the respect where it's like, you're respecting more the practitioner mm-hmm. and the art versus like this identity of this person. And that's how it goes into, it's mind against mind. Yeah. Like you have to totally disconnect your body from it in mm-hmm. a way. And that's what I do. When I roll, I disconnect my body and I just think of my mind. Like mm. my mind is thinking, where are they going to go? Mm. And how am I going to counter that? So I just, and then my body just goes along with it. It's so weird. I think cool. as, as a smaller, okay, actually we're talking about strategies for lightweights. Yeah. It keeps coming. You know, say, yeah. So I, we should come, come from Eileen. So some strategies, right? No, I was saying like as oh. far as like mindsets with, with uh, or asking about mindsets when it comes to strategies. Mm. Because I think sometimes like with a, uh, bigger people starting Jiu Jitsu, mm-hmm. I think it's almost like a crutch because it feels like you can just makeshift everything with like smashing people or laying on people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it hurts long-term development. Yeah. But being smaller, this, this is why I thought with your frame and starting out, like how much of a rarity you are because most people who are smaller in Jiu Jitsu and go to certain gyms and let's say no one really knows how to use their size too much or whatever, mm-hmm. like the motivation to keep coming back but once you do, you're like unstoppable because the only thing you can really rely, rely on is technique and strategy. Yeah. It's like, it's just insane. Yeah. As a bigger person, like they can rely on strength and size and then someone about their same size starts beating them technically or even smaller. Then you're like, you spent all that time just substituting versus yourself. You never really, really learn jujitsu. Yeah, you don't. Some, it's, it's a really weird, that's a weird statement, but it's true. Some, like some people, some, and I'm saying guys just because from a woman's perspective like some guys being sexist they, right now. yeah i'm gonna get canceled <laughs> yeah. um, oh, no. some guys they will look at me and think you know uh, i'm not gonna roll with her because i'm not gonna get anything out of it you know mm. but it's yeah, like they're probably not very good grapplers mm-hmm. but but ex- like that's the thing is like honestly rolling with me you will learn stuff be- yeah. just because of my technique i have to use technique Mm-hmm. So like I'm gonna clamp on your legs or I'm you know, so yeah. dive over the shoulder things like that. Yeah, you do that one a lot, but it's cool. Yeah, inverting. Actually, well, the diving over the shoulder what took me by surprise with it. I was like, when you did it to me the first time, I was like, what a good idea because now my weight's not on you mm-hmm. and you have a good ratchet control on me. And it was just like, oh, all right, that was really smart. I like that. That was a cool technique. Yeah. Like, I liked Thanks. it. <laughs> yeah, I think there are some filters uh, that people have to go through to to finally be like fully embraced with jujitsu and that's like to work with someone that's smaller than them mm-hmm. and to get sufficiently beat up and like how are you going to take that yeah and, and so i think that's that's such a great perspective from yourself of like having to vet those people coming in because even though you can be technical and work your stuff it's like people can react in different ways like that's a that's a scary feeling to have yeah so lay some strategies on us for small women yeah or just smaller grapplers yeah i or, so yeah, I, even a man just yeah. being smaller than the other per, like mm-hmm. yeah. you know, like they will probably all play. Yeah. So what I do, and I don't know if this might not work for everybody, but what I do is every time I walk in the door, I know I'm the underdog, so I feed on that. Mm. I'm like, I'm the underdog, and I'm, you know, I'm gonna show you what I can do as the mm. underdog. Because I don't know, I think everyone scrappy. Everyone loves when an underdog makes a comeback. <laughs> yeah. Like, wait, what? <laughs> we didn't predict this. So I just like being an unpredictable underdog. Cool. Yeah. Okay. So what are so that's like a mental side of it, mm-hmm. right? Where you're like, I'm here, I'm getting scrappy. Kind yeah. of accepting that there are these things, like the attributes, like here, like not yeah. to cry about it and say this is yeah. where this is where I'm at. But we've talked about technique a lot. Let's let's get more into that a little bit, right? So what are like some of the actual physical things that you do to try to get the advantage on your opponent, like? Some maybe, moves you like. You yeah, know. we can even do like maybe like when you start a match. Yeah. Oh, yeah, good idea. Yeah, go through we, the process we kind of, go of through a match. It just a little bit. And she can take off wherever wants. Um, When I'm rolling with somebody who's bigger than me, I 
look for if I see even just a little tiny space, I'm taking it. Mm. I don't even care what it is. I'm taking it, and then I'm gonna figure it out. I see there's space between your toes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's mine. <laughs> that's just, I'm gonna knee bar your foot. Yeah, Toe I see space, yeah. space between your knees. Yeah, but yeah, if there's even just the slightest little bit of space, I'm gonna take it. Do you say that on like offense or defense? Both. Yeah. Can you give me some examples of like in positions? Yeah. So if somebody has side control on me and let's say they lift their hip up for a second, mm. gotcha. my knee's going in there or my okay. arm is going in there. Like anything I can get in there, I'm going to get in there. What about if you have side control on them? Mm. I guess if I have side control on them, I like to work more up towards the body just You're saying to like kind north? Of counter their weight. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because then I can do from the either hips. my reverse triangles or get the back or whatever I want to do. Okay. Reverse triangles from side control? You're saying like rear triangles? It, well, sometimes it'll, it's like a reaction to just turn on your stomach. Oh, like I get what you're on, saying. Yeah. Oh, okay. So, or otherwise visual. you could do the gift wrap, you yeah. know, and just chair sit to a back, whatever you want to do. Yeah. So, yeah. I just try to go to where they're not focused on. Like if you're... I was just talking to Morgan about this today. If you have back control on someone and you're trying, like all you can focus on is the submission, you're going to lose it. You're going to lose mm. back control because okay. you're not focused on controlling them actually. So you're just going to gas yourself out. And then you're not thinking about your legs. They're going to clear your legs or they're going to clear mm. whatever you got. So I just really go into it thinking not submission based i just go into it thinking how can i control this person and then if it goes into a submission great if it cool. doesn't i learn something new so are there some positions that you avoid <laughs> i'm talking to levi about this mount. mount i hate being on mount I, it's she, just says, she says on mount yeah yes, top. on mount yeah. yeah i'm fine with being mounted as crazy as that sounds because again if i see a little space i'll get my legs in there or something um but yeah if somebody if I have mount on somebody, I always get bucked off. Mm. It's just a very hard thing for me to control. That makes sense. And like a lot of the mount retention stuff where you're trying to like get perpendicular to them, mm -hmm. your ankles do take a beating. And if you're yeah. like radically smaller than the other person, yeah. like I feel like that would be a great place to hurt your leg. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Okay. So mount. So avoiding top mount. Yeah. Um. Uh. What are some places that you directly go to where you're like, as a smaller grappler, like I need to get here because this is like where i'm gonna like do a really good job besides you know like you said with like inverting and then going for like a knee bar mm -hmm. yeah so i actually like being not inside control but i like having side control done to me oh so it, going to like clamp and stuff from yeah there? So or the, sorry the panini the panini press <laughs> <laughs> that sounds cooler yeah that. no yeah i i just like to really work to get my limbs into places because if it just comes easy for me, I'm not going to learn a lot. Mm. Like, I need to figure it out. And then I'll spend all night figuring it out and <laughs> think about it as I'm sleeping. <laughs> no, that's you're not alone. Yeah. <laughs> so when you aren't doing, like, leg entanglement stuff, like knee bars for submissions, what's a great place of control for you? Hmm. Like, if you I... can find your way in a match to say, like, as you said, you're avoiding mount, mm -hmm. right? And you're just talking about side control or... or um, you know, getting to a guard like is there a spot where you're like this can even the playing field out a little bit for me or good control i do like being on the back back control yeah mm -hmm. i do like being on the back just because of it's trying to think about what can i control because now you have to control their arms mm -hmm. their legs their hips their head like there's just everything you have to control and it's just such a mind game for me so i like to really challenge myself and not work for the submission right away. I'll just control what I can. So if you're seeking a back control position and let's say you're starting the, a match out with it, would you much rather play guard or would you rather work to pass the guard? I'm like, I see a if bigger I'm person. If I'm starting in back control? Sorry, I apologize. Like starting a match. Oh, okay. Like you're slap bump and you're like, hey, I'm going to get the back control. Mm -hmm. Like do you do like play more of a guard game to get to it or would you rather? I'd rather pass the guard. Pass the guard? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If I'm playing guard game, I'm going to get your legs. 
Oh, interesting. Fair. Yeah. Fair. Okay. So in a seated position, you're more yeah. like, I'm going for legs. Yeah. And I'm... if you're playing a guard passing game, you're trying to get people's backs. I'm trying to get people's backs. Yeah. This Otherwise... whole podcast was a trick to know your strategy. Now I'm good oh. to go. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell me your we're pathways. Not even, we're not even recording right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> we, I, I've. Boom. Seen... Gotcha. Remember, um, I was seated and you were trying to pass my guard and you were like, I, like. Yeah. What? <laughs> and I'm like, it's yeah, difficult. I, just... I would say. Smaller people, I've always had the most difficulty passing. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I would say I would got three knees. It's a who is it? It's a Mikey, Mikey Musumeci, because he's got like a what's it like a, a Michael Phelps type body where he's got really long yeah. upper body. And it's got short legs. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. What so it's like he can and his hips just are like hide. super mobile too. Yeah, yeah. So it's like there's no way you're passing uh, the guard. Uh, I want to kind of flip the strategy a little bit because um, prior to theory. You were you spent your whole career basically in the gi. I did, yeah. So I thought that might be interesting too to throw that in there because I think with the gi, that helps level the playing field a lot because now you've got all these handles and ropes. Mm -hmm. So I think especially for anybody of any size or any any woman, like now you've got this like added factor that you can choke someone with their garments, mm -hmm. you know, or whatever the case may be. So uh, what helped you a lot with with the gi against people when you're playing? Because I. I felt like the strategies you were doing before, like a lot of open guards, mm -hmm. like you pull guard and be like spider guard or anything like that yeah, too. Yeah, I like the spider guard. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The gi, it was definitely easier for me, obviously, because I trained gi for four whatever years. Yeah, yeah. So I just was used to having those grips that I can get. Um, it was easier for me to latch on to a bigger person just because I could use my hand strength and my grip strength, and if they decide to sit up, well, I'm going up with you mm. because I'm connected to mm -hmm. you at all times. That's a good point. So, and it was easier for choking as well, just because yeah. it's insane to use somebody's clothing to choke them. Yeah, that's yeah, just you, crazy to me. You can get mm -hmm. so, so much leverage. But then I figured I would step out of my comfort zone and try nogi, and that's why I'm here at Theory. And nice. It took me... I don't know how long it took me to adjust to it. I feel like I it think it was about like twenty minutes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Probably. yeah. yeah. That was a I long actually didn't even minutes. know you had mm. a lot of time in the gi. Like I just you you did great. Yeah, I just I was like I'm gonna throw myself in here just like I threw myself into jujitsu five years ago. So yeah, and I feel like that's all you can do is just throw yourself in there, and if you like it, you like it. If you don't, find something else. Yeah, I think that's well. That was a quote we were talking about with Reagan, right? The oh yeah, what was yeah. it the CrossFit? quote it was yeah, like it was, it, we're gonna keep messing this up it's for everyone but not oh, crap see i know this is bad. <laughs> you have to ask Greg again. like it's um, for all but not for, for everyone or something yeah you know it's you know, for, you know, we're, it's we're for everybody but it's not for everybody something kind of it's that there's different it's for anyone it. but not for everybody yeah, yeah that's would that be, better would that it yeah is probably that, yeah something like probably, that yeah. but it makes sense because anyone can walk in these doors to try it yeah mm -hmm. but it's like but the mm, spirit of it i guess is not for everybody getting used to having you'll know someone put their sweaty rash guard in your face or a sweat drip in your eyes i was gonna say that yeah. that's the i feel like yeah. there's water torture i feel like there's mm -hmm. like 10 filters water you have boarding. to walk through until you can say you're a you're like a jiu-jitsu person your like, 10 labors <laughs> <laughs> you, need, like you need to like have sweat drip in your mouth mm -hmm. from somebody else like you need yep. these things to be you done have to have their you. rash guard in your mouth as yes. you're trying to breathe you're i feel like i should have a checklist yeah. and be like yeah. yes yeah. now you are what would be on that list yeah the initiation list? Yeah. Ooh, that's Probably a injuring yourself, definitely. <laughs> okay. Injuring Jamming a thumb. Yourself. Do it yourself. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your ears feel hot because they're starting to get cauliflowered. Yep. Hard to bend. <laughs> yeah. Very hurtful. Um, yeah. Sweat in any type of area that you can Sweat get everywhere. It. Yeah, <laughs> sweat honestly, everywhere. <laughs> it's disgusting. <laughs> or. It's useful, though. Or having Slip out someone of else's. This sounds crazy. Oh, it's good. But having someone else's dry skin on your rash guard have you ever had that dry, dry skin? skin like they're if you're like heel hooking someone they have dry feet and it's just like their skin oh is, yeah i've had to just shake it off my rash guard i'm like I've oh been here. gotcha so i leg lock day i wear usually sleeves yeah <laughs> <laughs> kind of like yeah, i've i stuff. some feet are gross i am a little bit of a clean freak with some of that stuff yeah. funny enough when you were talking about what to look for i was surprised you didn't say hygiene because that's, that's like oh, the main yeah. thing i look for is yeah. hygiene mm -hmm. i look at their nails the toenails. Yeah. yeah i look yeah. at their fingernails their toenails and their mm -hmm. teeth and yeah. just like and like how well they're mm -hmm. good do they take care of their body yeah. is True. it like a normal level okay we're good mm -hmm. if it's like 
Ooh, ugh, I can't quite tell. I think yeah. those are some of those things like initially when come, people come in here, they're not aware of all those things. Mm-hmm. But for all of us being in martial arts for a while, it's like you, you see those things that should be normalized. But it's like, that's what I'm saying. Like, that's the 10 labors. Like, you have to go through with it. And that's the filter. Mm-hmm. It's like, are you OK with this? And it's like, yes. OK, are you OK with this? And it's like, yeah, like you have to go through it to be a sufficiently, let's say grounded. That seems like too on the nose. Grounded. <laughs> Grounded, uh, grounded grappler. Yeah, grounded <laughs> grappler. Like GG. GG. It has to be something like that because otherwise, it just you're, you're too much of a liability. Yeah. On the mats. You know, uh, I wish we had a cool name for like when you're a practitioner of jujitsu because like judo has judoka. You do. It's a jujitero. That's not as cool as judoka. No, no jujitero. Sounds cool. Jujitero is a jujist. Yo, know, what was it? <laughs> you could keep that. We're definitely getting canceled. Yes. <laughs> When you're when you're just on that certain <laughs> mind wavelength, wavelength. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm I'm definitely down that realm because uh, I have like hundreds and hundreds of like flow charts I've made really? to like basically untangle everything. Yeah, in jiu-jitsu. like if you do this, you do that. Like huge mess. That's why flow I think. Charts. That's why I think cross training is so important too. Like you can spend years rolling with the same people all the time. Mm. there's a limit to where you're going to learn things. True. Because then you know their game. It's just the same crap over and over. So if you hop over to another gym and you're like, wait, I'm a blue belt. This girl is a blue belt too, or this guy's a blue belt too, but he's beating me in these areas. Like That's where you are going to learn things. We, oh, we haven't more. framed this yet. Uh, Eileen's a two-stripe blue belt. Yeah. 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 I was going to ask about... Blueberry. Yeah. Blueberry. Yeah. I don't even know what the purple Food is supposed to be. Again, <laughs> What's the purple is? then? Grape? I'm... We can transition I was into. thinking of grape jitsu, but grape I'm jitsu. also thinking of Barney BJJ because I was obsessed with Barney, oh, Barney when I was young. I'm a Barney belt. A Barney what about brown? Poop. <laughs> I would say chocolate. <laughs> yeah. chocolate. Okay. So I think that's how I think about my game. Just no. So I, that's really that was some be some questions for you too about uh, as we're we're coming to our end here in a little while. So you're a two stripe blue belt, right? So you're on the path to purple. That's scary, yeah. So what's like, uh, like what are you working on in terms of grappling right now to lead you to that spot? Mount. Mount. Oh. Yep. What working I some hate, deficiencies. Yeah, I'm just gonna work my weakness. Yeah. That's all I can do. That's a good idea. Is I could mount? take a page out of that. Yeah. That's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> a little more well-rounded. Yeah. You don't want to be a purple belt that like can't hold mount kind of thing. Exactly. Yeah. It's uh, it would just be embarrassing. I feel like that about arm bars. Really? That's yeah, bad at arm terrible bars. at arm bars. Purple belt's scary to me. I don't know. Yeah. It's just like because then how, people expect me to know stuff. So I was gonna say, how do you how do you view someone who is a purple belt? Mm, that's like oh um like when you have that vision in your head of like what a purple belt looks like. I think of so going back to resurgence, there's a girl there named Peyton. Mm-hmm. Just a beast of a woman. Mm-hmm. Like I looked up to her for years and I still do look up to her. Mm-hmm. And she to me, like first starting, I'm like, this has to be a black belt like mm-hmm. there's no there's yeah. no other way and um i learned a lot from her but when i think of purple belt i think of peyton okay. which sounds yeah. crazy to me but like you should invite her in she's so mm-hmm. technical too and she's she's a beast like she could easily outstrength people too but she has such technical strength as well it's insane i think she's a brown belt no no i think she's a purple belt did she just get her purple i think I she's she... a one stripe mm. purple belt Belts get weird. Oh, this is yeah, belts belts are, but that's why weird. I like to ask the opinion of it because I think mm-hmm. people's perspective, we talked about this a couple of times of like what it means to be these belts. Mm-hmm. We've had, we have one podcast so far talking to blue belt. Yeah. You know, um, and I think even on that topic of you just having this visual, this, this person to like say, I have to feel like I'm at that level in order to be that purple belt. How would you recommend people um, if they're wanting to be motivated to learn or to, to achieve a blue belt someday? Especially females in the sport too. Like, yeah. what do you, what do you feel is uh, important for, to make that happen? Because you're talking about like consistency and showing up and things like that too. But you know, yeah, I would say work work with people who you know will smash you. Like that sounds crazy, but work with people who you know will give you a fight only because then you can figure out how to get out of certain situations, mm-hmm. and that will build your game. Yeah, okay. you, you like if you work with somebody who you know is just gonna get you every time in submission. That's something 
where you're like, okay, I can't just focus on submission. I have to work on my control and how to breathe and how to get out of this submission. Or how Breathing's to... a big one. Hmm? Breathing's a big one. Breathing Underrated. Huge. huge. I've talked about this so many times of uh, cardio and jiu-jitsu mm-hmm. that people will come in and experience jiu-jitsu for roughly the first time and they're like, I'm so exhausted. Yes. Like I know, yeah. I know one person- Bro, here, you but, weren't breathing. Well, yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> one, one person brought their friend in here and they had maybe slight jiu-jitsu experience and I kind of played rolled them for a round and I knew them a little bit outside the school too. And it was like three minutes. They're exhausted. Mm-hmm. And they said, Levi, I have no clue how you do this like five, six times a week. Yeah. And I'm like, it's not like your cardio. It's just the, like you said, I, I'd be exhausted too if I held my breath and flexed all my muscles for two minutes. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like some people <laughs> think it's like some weird mystical cardio thing. Like you, I just got to run more. It's like, no, it's, it's anxiety. It's, it's like you're not people. showing. You're just like or locking up. You're just sitting tight so you can hold something well, tight. And, you know? and all of us have experienced uh, competing yeah. and feeling the exhaustion that competition mm-hmm. comes, even though we all have experience being on these mats. It's like the mine was not anxiety. Mine was I was moving so much. Oh, but but it's like I was just like I still think it's anxiety because it's just like you're trying to like go and you're trying to like throw speed onto things into like I don't think that'd yeah. be anxiety though because it wasn't like worry. It was like go like pr- pressure push oh, go so go pressure. like just like you're just keep trying to drive like you know when you're like pushing a car that like yeah you know like won't work or something like that and you're just like push push but you know just like what i think I, it yeah, might be like an internal clock for you like you know time is ticking so yeah. it might it might honestly build up some anxiety for you which might gas you out but i think that internal clock is pushing you to create more pressure and just gassing yourself out because you're like, I only have like three minutes in this match. Yeah. I need to get where I need to get. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We got you, so. your down points or, yeah. uh, you know, or. You it's know. hard it's because I, I think it's a difficult environment to create in the gym. You like, can't. could, could yeah. you create that? Like you're saying, talk about pressure. If you just say go, no, do well, you feel like you'd be that exhausted? No, because like I can get pretty close, like yeah. depending on who I'm going with, where mm-hmm. you just intentionally are just like push, 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 push. Even when you're like, I'm going to ditch this position so I can keep pushing, you yeah. know, like it's mm-hmm. not exactly. You're not going to have your best showcasing of jujitsu skill, but I think you can get pretty tired. But like Eileen was uh, talking about with, um, oh shoot, I lost my thought. Internal clock? Internal. Pressure? Time? Pressure? Time. Ah, dang it. Exhaust. And I had a good point. <laughs> it's okay. Oh. <laughs> but I was going to say, yeah. like, I think sometimes when you're rolling against someone who doesn't, like, you don't really know too well, you feel like you can kind of cut loose with this one person. Mm-hmm. You know, like, okay, you're in my division. You're about my same experience level. Mm-hmm. Like, cool. You're just going to feel me now. Yeah. And I think sometimes in the gym, we want to be very nice training partners. Oh, and you're like, Go for I knew it. the point. Let's do that. <laughs> like Eileen was saying, you have to train at other school, uh, train with other people mm-hmm. outside your yeah. school. That's the thing I think at the tournament that yeah. is also like, well, because you don't know what they got. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You're just so used to your same old training partners. and Yeah, yeah I think that can be like exhausting. That. Yeah, that's We've, scary. Even when we went to Manitowoc, I got pretty tired because I was just mm-hmm. like yeah. not used to like, what are they doing? You know, and yeah. just trying to figure it out. I think I've gone back and forth in this so many times because when John Donahue would talk about uh, like how you should teach people right away jiu-jitsu, like learning submission escapes and learning pin escapes right away. And then he's like, you basically go backwards. Mm-hmm. And then you learn guard retention and then you learn the opposite. Now you learn passing and whatever. And I thought, eh, I'm like, I feel like just teaching people the full offense of jiu-jitsu right away works a lot better for like the framework. But honestly, I think when I'm rolling any experienced person, my confidence and my relaxation comes from my pin escape confidence. Like I can, I can allow things to happen a little bit. So like when I'm training out in Chicago and I'm training other places, like let's just see what happens. I want to see what you do. It's more of like an exploratory thing. This isn't like some life or death thing right now. Yeah, like it's, and- it's more like, let's just see what happens. Also, oh, that was cool. I want to see what you do in Mount versus what other people do in Mount. Not just like letting things happen and let's let you jump into it, but it's more exploratory to me right now. It's more like me having a fun walk around jujitsu. Yeah, once you competing. can control your mind, you can get the victory. And that's how I relate it with jujitsu as well. Mm. Like, if you can control the person and Write control their mind, then you can get the submission. It's just how I. Mastery of yourself. How I, yeah, how I think of it. It gives you some experience and confidence. So, like. And trust yourself. Yeah. Like, don't go into it and be like, oh my God, I don't know what this person's going to do. Like, mm-hmm. if you're cross training. Or you think, you know what, this person's a higher belt, I'm scared. Like, just trust yourself, be confident in what you can do, because that's all you can do. Mm -hmm. Hmm, And then you'll figure things out on the way. Now, if you take that mindset (laughs) into competition, competition, you knew I was going with that. I can dish it out, but (laughs) (laughs) 
I don't mean to say like to, to apply it, but it's like that's that same framework. Yeah. I've always thought that was so interesting that uh, mindsets can shift once I'm like, it was a good example. Of this. It's like being, uh, being like recorded for real. Let's put it that way. Like when I did bell tests for people and we would record it mm-hmm. um, to send out to the academy, people all got anxiety. And all freaked out. I've had people that I worked with so many times of doing live drills. And because we were recording it, I've had two or three people have to stop because they had to go throw up. What? Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Because they're just like, it's like really? you said, like this tension of like going. But it's just literally a camera sitting in the corner. Mm-hmm. Of just, just going. Just not tell them you're recording. Or, or to say like, I, you guys can have all these roles and matches in here. And then if we have a, my, have my uh, grappling invitational here. And like, same mats, same space. Mm-hmm. Here's some other person. And now all these people are watching and you go. Mm-hmm. You're going to act way different. Yeah. Versus like having that same mindset. So there's real psychology behind it. I mean, yeah. you think about all top level, you know, NBA stars and everything like that. It's like all mental games at this mm-hmm. point. It's not the physical act of it. You know, it's like that's the. You have to get comfortable being uncomfortable. Yeah. In many situations. So it's jujitsu. Well, and that's where Donna, her thing, I think, comes <clears> from what it said confidence comes from experience mm-hmm. to be able to do it. But what happens though is, like you said, when you go get someone you don't know. Mm-hmm. there's that little bit of like what tricks do they have up their sleeve yeah. that I don't know about. And this is where you have to work with so many people of different things. Like no matter what you pull on me, I probably have seen it before. That's why cross training to yeah. me is so important. I agree I need with to that. Do more of that. What's that? I need to do more well, of that. Well, this is why I'm trying to get a group uh, March 2nd, to March 9th, right? To Mantawak yeah. for us to what? For me to mentally we have out. We have plans on the 2nd. We have plans on the 2nd. Wait, for... that's Sunday, right? So this is this is a Saturday. Saturday. Oh, okay, okay. Yes, Saturday. Sorry. So, but to, to like go out, Levi. I, sorry, I know that. Uh, it's like March third, I think. It's that Sunday, yeah. So ne- next Sunday or whatever. Uh, but to have a group go out and to say like, here's like you're talking about like safe training partners, like mm-hmm. to say here's people that you can you can work with, uh, but just get a, a different experience. I uh, Matt and I had an episode where we we're talking about uh, training at other schools, the pop in, the pop in, and uh, I think it's if you feel really unsure about a popping experience like you just said tell the person say hey i'm just coming here to watch class mm-hmm. like sit and, and watch and just see it like you said watching those people and see how people roll and you're like oh like they look a little intense and suddenly you're like maybe i maybe i'll head out or whatever yeah so bringing it back to purple belt <laughs> i'm scared so, so if you think you got your mount tightened up that'd be it then you're a purple belt. I mean, I'm. I know that there are other things that I definitely can work on, but the main thing for me is I'm just gonna focus on my the biggest weakness. I is. That's fair. I think purple belts should have at least one A game from the top and the bottom. Mm-hmm. Like that's a that's yeah. a big thing. You should have something in your guard that you feel confident with, and something on top you feel confident with. Mm-hmm. I think so. So I guess do you uh you know some people set goals for the year and whatnot. Yeah. So is that like. Did you like set that as a goal to be like, I am going to get better at the mount and I'm going to practice it X amount of times per week and stuff like that? Yeah. So I used to, <laughs> I used to have the outlook of, okay, my goal is to get my purple belt. But then I'm like, what does that mean? Yeah. Honestly, like what? I couldn't even define it to myself. I'm like, I don't even know what that means to myself. So I'm like, what is my weakness? Because... Hmm. You know, if I continue to not do my weakness, I can't get better at it. So, yeah, my weakness is mount. So my goal is to get pretty good at. It's a good que- It's a good framework, right? It's like, what is a purple belt? Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, what are the things a purple belt would be good at? Mm-hmm. Okay, and then you work back. Where where are you? And then you look at the gap. There, like there are so many times where I would randomly message Levi, and I'm like, I don't know where I am in jujitsu. Like I don't even. I have no idea where i am ranked right now mm. but honestly it doesn't even matter. yeah like it's it so weird you, yeah you got to get out of that mindset because sometimes you know i go in and i'm like oh, i can't i can't see if i'm getting better like i don't know because everyone's so much bigger than me but then if you have somebody you know your size that comes in or whatever the case is and you're like doing what you want to them it's like maybe I actually am getting better. Mm, it's just so yeah. hard to see that you're progressing when you're so small. It was You were talking about that the other day, how you had some good rounds, you know, yeah. and you were like, this is awesome. Yeah. Which, by the way, I hope I didn't offend you when I asked, like, wait, so what, I, I didn't know what belt you were because you were, because like the experience level of the people you were telling me about and you're like, yeah, I did really well there. And I was like, really confused because none of us wear belts. 
Yeah. And so I didn't know. So I hope I didn't offend you. But I think you're definitely a two stripe white belt. I mean, blue belt. Oh my God. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. She's a, belt. she's a she's a six stripe white belt. Six yeah. stripe white belt. Yeah, yeah. exactly. No, saying. I was saying that because you were telling me you versed a two stripe white belt and it went well, right? Or a three stripe? I think it. Or it four? Was a four, stripe four stripe. Four stripe. Sorry. Yeah. See, I'm terrible at the belts. So I don't know, any, know anything that's going on. I think sometimes belts the ranking yeah. with each other, like, it's kind of interesting that jiu jitsu, I guess, no gi grappling, has belts still, but I think people still want a marker kind of, fun. of like where they want to go, right? It's like a, it's achievement based stuff. Yeah. But it's interesting because probably the one of the more popular activities in the world is yoga but yoga has like a level of body mastery and positioning but there's no like ranking system with yoga okay. like you achieve this position and it's like you get this sort of ranking mm-hmm. people just show up day after day and so if someone looks like they're really good with certain flows like oh i need help with this and you're mm-hmm. like well i've been doing this for 10 or 12 years yeah like, oh, okay like you probably are pretty good but if you see someone come in they're super flexible yeah you don't and fight they, each other though th- but that's the hard part yeah. like that's that's that Maybe measurement. Maybe we should. Uh, Fighting yoga. Uh, was it Craig Jones Forced and uh, Keenan Cornelius was talking about like a ranking system for jiu-jitsu? Yeah. To create some sort yep. of like competitive ranking system. And then to have the belt system as kind of this like other thing that kind of sits on the side. That's yeah. like more of like an in-school thing versus like if you want to compete, you basically work your, your level. Because the weird thing about chess is that you can pop onto a program and you can like give you a rough estimate of where your score is. Mm. There's no like official assessor when it comes to jiu-jitsu ranking like i trained with my friends for eight years we never had belts where am i at right now it's yeah. real, like oh you're like a purple belt okay cool guess i'm a, a purple belt like just recently i was fixated on ranks literally just recently like i just had a conversation with levi probably like two weeks ago and then i'm like, you're like dude why do you not have a purple so belt for me? No. No, Push no. me against the wall. Yeah. This one is yeah. like, purple. Where's purple? No, I just was confused. I'm going to sweat on you. On where I was at. And then I was also worried about, like, if I were to get promoted soon or whenever Levi decides to promote me when I earned it, I'm like, wait, I don't know what other people are going to think because I'm so... Like, I can tell you what they're going to think. Because it's so easy to just lay on me as a, like a bigger man. So it's like... I don't know. I just had that realization of yeah. what are other Go people are going to think. They're going to say, congratulations. That's amazing. Yeah, that's amazing. what they're going to think. I, mean, yeah. I would hope so. But <laughs> Eileen, have you ever no one heard, would doubt it. Have you ever heard of the Boyd belts before? No. Okay. So the Boyd belts was after this guy named John Boyd. And this concept was that age and size will affect your belt rank. So if someone outweighs you by 50 pounds, you consider them an well, additional. I thought it was 20. 20 pounds, 10 years. Like yeah, I thought that's I what think it was. it's like maybe twenty seems too small. I think it was like fifty pounds because that's a big difference. Fifty pounds, and you can correct me, Mister Google. Well, you do no, that. Um, but let's just say, for example, it's yeah. like if you give, let's say, fifty pounds, consider them another belt rank higher than you. Mm. If they're fifty pounds heavier than you, if they're also ten years younger than you, add another belt rank to it. So if I'm a forty-year-old purple belt, let's say, and I'm rolling against a twenty-year-old blue belt. You know, it's like that could legit be problems for me. The speed. S- of physicality Agility. and yeah. size. Or if, if they're 20, yeah, they're 20 years younger than me and they're 50 pounds heavier than me. It's like those are real factors. Mm-hmm. So this is where it gets into interesting conversations because you're like, okay, well, then what what's considered this belt rank? If this person who's a blue belt and I'm a purple belt, well, how are they beating me right now? Yeah. There's like real things. And sometimes the gi can... Uh, even things out, like you said, doesn't matter how big you are, I'll grab your cloth and yeah. choke you. Yeah. But in a grappling situation, that's where like the leniency comes from, mm-hmm. right? It's like, that's the difficult part. I mean, I've rolled people who are like 300 pounds and it's like, they never get a sense of like ever having someone bigger than them hold them down too. You know, it's like, there's just like yeah. real factor that comes into like when Matt was just saying, like strength plays a factor. People think sometimes when you wear the belt all the time, that gives you that mystical power. Like, you're a purple belt. I'm a blue belt. So you're better than me. Yeah. It's like, nope. When we, we have no belt on in here, we just yeah. make contact with each person and we go, this is my assessment right now of this person. Mm-hmm. Like, this is how they are compared to me. And that's all you really can do at that yeah. point. That's but, why I always feel people out if I don't know them. Yeah. Like, I'm just, I liked your, see. liked your framework from it. Like, that was fantastic of just like yeah. kind of working a little bit. Yeah. I like it. Okay, I got two silly questions for you. I'm scared. These are all silly. <laughs> so the first is, do you kick Jake's butt when you <laughs> wrestle? 
Because yeah. my wife tries always to, she's always trying right to now. take me down. Well, not when she's pregnant, but like they'll try to annoy me. She tries to annoy me until we wrestle, mm-hmm. essentially. Okay, yeah. Uh, and so I was like, okay, well, I wonder if Eileen and Jake do that. And then I was like, wait, you're the grab. <laughs> it's uh, like, just kick his butt or no? Jake, Jake is the least physical guy in that type of aspect. <laughs> like he wants nothing to do with grappling at yeah. all. And I've tried to get him. I've got him to do two classes once. That's cool. He hated it. Absolutely. Really? It. Yeah. Interesting. He just does not for everybody. Yeah, he's just like the total opposite of grappling. <laughs> if you take the nicest guy out there and place him in a physical situation, he's gonna talk his way out of it mm. instead of you Verbal know, which is fair. Yeah, instead of physically getting out of it. That's but, cool. Got high ro- rolling stats and charisma. Mm-hmm. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That's awesome. But uh, okay, so is the answer yes? You kick his butt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Uh, no. no. No? Oh, okay. <laughs> Jill and I would nice. get scrappy, too. Yeah, I was like going to say, you guys a, probably get really she's, scrappy. She's a blue belt, though, so she, uh, she yeah. gets scrappy. You guys fight each other. I feel uh, like that could be funny. Yeah. Altercations in, like, a fun it's, way. It's more that I've seen Jill flinch on Finn a couple times. Like, like she'll do that to Finn. Like, if it, <laughs> and Finn freaks out. Like, what are you, okay. you going to do? Checks her son. She checks, like, what? <laughs> what? what? He goes, I'm ah. the queen bird around yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. But her favorite roles are when she comes in here and pops in every once in a while. Like, she'll roll with Finn. That's cool. Like, how cool is that? Like, I can't mm-hmm. imagine rolling like my mom, and yeah. like actually, and then he like got her in a rear naked choke one time, and she's like, "I think he's having like for real with it." It's like what a what a framework at that point. Like you're just rolling with your mom and yeah. beating. She's beating me up right now. Yeah. So then my second silly question is mm-hmm. our most important question here yes, on the true. grappling podcast. Yes. <gasps> Levi, do it. You know what a question I'm going to oh, ask. You give oh, two God. variations of it. So okay, actually, I'll do the. I'll just do it. <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> I wasn't ready for that. Okay. I'm not ready. What is your grappling spirit animal? Ooh, that's a good one. I would say... We give her that variation. We've gotten some really good answers on this one. Uh, yeah, we have really creative, awesome answers. Yeah, so I'm no sure pressure, no pressure at all. I would say a snake. Ooh, a snake. Because even the small What kind of snake? Like scary? a viper or like a constrictor? constrictor. Literally any Rattlesnake. snake. A even grass garden snake? snakes a are garden scary. Snake? Like even <laughs> the small ones are scary because it's like you don't know if they're going to bite you. Uh-huh. You don't know if they're going to wrap around you. And just suffocate you. You don't know anything. So you're a general snake? Yeah. Okay. So I'm a snake with no arms. <laughs> the snake. Just a snake. But if you, <laughs> you know, Photoshop a snake doing a knee bar yeah. somehow. T-Rex snake. Yeah. A snake. It feels like evolution. Arm right barring a little bird. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be all bringing it all together, <gasps> right? A snake you, yeah, like, yeah. with little arms, knee barring. That's called a lizard. A lion. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> little, little feet, little, little arms. A lizard. Yeah. Yeah. Have you gecko. ever seen those things run? I used to have a pet That's lizard. That's what I look like in Judith. <laughs> it's like a gecko. Yeah, gecko. gecko. It could be the the grape gecko. Oh, you had met yeah. the, the one time I asked you and Matt uh, deflected the question because he couldn't give me an animal, so he gave me an element. <laughs> Like, like on the periodic table? No, no, no that's actually like, better. Like, that's way better. I'm nitrogen. Yeah. I'm barium. I'm barium. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm iron. I'm gold. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, like an yours? element. You were like, I was like water. water. Okay, I'm like, picked Whoa. water. I still have to. I've never picked a, a, a grappling spirit animal yet. Hmm. Oh, what was mine? What was a you picked a komodo dragon? Komodo dragon. Because mm. the have, smell. Yeah, the no, smell. Okay. It's nasty. <laughs> but yeah. that's how they kill animals. They bite them and they like leech poison and then they just walk away. Like you, you're already dead and you don't even know it. All yeah. the bacteria in their yeah, mouth. Yeah, it's just stuff. like you're just dead. They're pretty cool looking creatures. My, I say that because I think sometimes mm-hmm. with a uh, probably the same with snake too. Like I think yeah. there's a. I love the inevitableness of it. Mm-hmm. Like I catch something and they feel like they still have a fight and it's like it's already done. Mm. Yeah, you're just leeching on it. My mom says, she watches videos of my jujitsu and she's like, you're like a, a snake. Have you ever seen a snake grab its prey? And then she'll show me videos and <laughs> it's, it's just whoosh, so quick. Wrapping, yeah. wrapping around it. It's just like immediate attack. You don't even see it coming. But So yeah. instead of the naming a submission move, if you could invent a submission move, yeah. What would that be? Like a oh, variation boy. of something. Like if you like, would it be like a, a certain style of a knee bar, or would it be like a it choke? Would probably be have to do do something with a tree capata. Mm, interesting. I love. If you did knee bar, you could call like it the Nyleen bar. <laughs> Leaning bar. Opa the leaning bar. <laughs> oh, that's cool. I love the tree capata too. Interesting. Yeah, that tree capata for the longest time like didn't have like a counter to it. As well, yeah. We've talked with Roy personally. Like me and Luke were here, like trying to figure out how to beat a Trico Plata, and it's tough. 
Mm-hmm. It's a tough spot to get. All right. So some closing thoughts. We've been at this for an hour and a half. Whoa. Oh. Yeah. So are there any topics that we failed to bring up that you wish we would have? I don't think so off the top of my head. Okay. Or maybe anything you want to. Just... We can always do a round two as well yeah. sometime. Yeah. And then are there any things that you want to promote or share? I know, uh, you know, I know your hubby's got his, 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 uh, you know, his, his thing and whatnot. Yeah. Yeah. My husband has his social media thing going on. Uh, he's kind of on and off with it though. So I don't know if he would want me to promote it no. right now, but. I'll say, well, you got to, you, is that the car you drove here in? Yeah. That thing's sick. The M3. That's awesome. I saw an electric like, car. Oh, super cool. Yeah. That's our summer. Well, one of us. <laughs> summer cars. It's not summertime. It's winter here in Wisconsin. Car. Yeah. That's so cool. But yeah, we we like cars. We're kind of nerdy in that way. You we also don't, we don't you, like working on them, but we like to just drop. Them. <laughs> I like eating desserts, but I don't like <laughs> make them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, and that. Well, how about this? I did, I don't know if you wanted to share your Instagram or anything like that. I know you put jujitsu videos on there. Yeah, I just uh, well. That one video that just went crazy for no yeah, reason. Yeah, how many views and did it have? It, right now it has like 5.8 million. Or no, 6 million. Whoa. 6 million. Whoa. 6 million. Yeah. Whoa, and did you put the grappling podcast on no. there? <laughs> yeah, that's a worry. But that's where we're talking we about got the, some viewers. The, the collab stuff that we have, thousand. we have now. But the two videos we've had since did not uh, did not crack that same thing. Yeah. I, but, don't, I but, don't know. I don't want people to expect me to post things all the time. Mm-hmm. But I just like to have fun with it, I guess. Like, yeah. That's cool. Don't expect this great influencer out of me I'm you know just having fun there might be an appetite for that honestly yeah because like if you're feeling that way there's probably a lot of other people yeah and it means that the things you're posting are actually things you think are cool yeah which think, means that you've cultivated like a list of the cool things for people to look at i think that yeah. format was what jake was telling me at the tournament you never was, told us what the instagram handle was oh it's blueberry bjj and okay instagram was like oh you reached a certain amount of followers do you want your blue check mark and i'm like oh no but you get the blue. Might be official. That's cool. Yeah, I'm like, no, are you, you going to change it when you get your purple? Yeah, yeah. I'm thinking of just lose lose all your followers and restart. Great. Yeah, that'll be in like seven years. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was weird because when we made that video, it was like just a random like, hey, let's just throw it out there. Yeah. Expecting just like maybe a thousand or something to be fun. The, the the variety of comments on that video is nuts, nuts. <laughs> Some people are like, oh, cool. Like, I'm going to open myself up and try this. And, like, that's how it should be. Yeah. You know? And hey, then cool. other people Wait, are yeah. like, this will never work. <laughs> <laughs> Just tossing over your your whole head. Like, yeah. a woman will never beat a man. It's like, Really? People said that? Yeah. Somebody said that. Oh, my there. God. Well, on the six million views, obviously, like, attracts people That's true. People You're going to have a couple turds too. in there. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. But it's cool. I mean, I like some of that because... Uh, it just promotes discussion. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. people can see all the fun things that we do in here. All right. I'm wondering if Mikey saw it. I know. Whether it makes <laughs> Mikey Musa Yeah. I just oh, know. you're the calf slicer girl. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I just want to know if Mikey saw it. <laughs> Mikey, if you're listening. We can send it to him. You know. Shout Before. out to Daniel Kelly. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag, hashtag. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I guess, Levi, where can people find us? Thegrapplingpodcast.com. And where else, Matt? Oh, yeah. Grapple Pod, Pod on Xbox. Yes. We're on Xbox. <laughs> if you want to <laughs> compete with him. Yeah, if you Xbox. would like to play any Xbox games. I've, I've been playing a lot of Ghost Simulator 3 with my son. Ghost Simulator. He loves this game. <laughs> loves it. But anyways. Emily, do you play any games? I don't. I play mind games with my, my. husband. <laughs> oh, <laughs> that's a, that's the thing that's where you try to start fights. That's, that's a kind of sport, <laughs> My too. wife was telling me about those. I'm going to mind control you. Yeah. <laughs> The dark side. Plays for reals. No, so I, I, don't, I don't really play games, I guess. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just jujitsu. Just yeah. jujitsu games. Just yeah. jujitsu. That wears me out enough. Okay. Well, hey, thank you for coming on the podcast, Eileen. Thank I you mean. for having me. It's my first podcast. Thank you, everyone, for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast, please share it with a friend. 